I want to show you how you make some larger glazed pots. Uh, I put it into a pan, a big wide pan, as big as you can get. Uh, sometimes they're sold as outdoor dish pans or oil change pans. And then whenever I transfer into this, I'll always put it through a, a fairly coarse mesh sieve. This is like a 60 mesh sieve. I'll pour the bucket in. I already mixed the glaze up. But it's still going to have some lumps and, and foreign stuff that gets in it. Just pick it up and, and keep filling it up. Most pots you want to glaze fairly deep in the bucket here. Okay, there's always a little bit of stuff there which is going to get on your pot, so it's nice to get it strained like that. Now when you're doing a big bowl or something like this, uh, it'll fit in there kind of the way it is, but you still need to kind of accommodate it. And uh, I use the glazing tongs, and one thing to keep in mind when you're doing a big thing in glazing tongs is there's a lot of leverage. If you're just holding it by the tongs, uh, it can poke right through the sides or crack off on this side. So you usually want to support it on the other side some while you're doing it. So I'm going to glaze this whole one uh, just in one color, black. I'm going to dip it in, turn it around, take it back out again. Now when I lifted it there, it was, I wasn't putting any leverage on it, and I'm holding it with the finger here to support it. Okay, I'm going to set this aside to dry for a minute. Now as I often say, one glaze is kind of boring, so we'll do the same thing with this other bowl, but not do it all the way in. Uh, I'm going to start by dipping it in about halfway Give it a rotation and get kind of a hills type shape in there. Now of course we're going to have to dip it in another glaze, so we're going to have to change buckets. We'll set this aside for now. This arch candle holder is one of the more, uh, the bigger things that I tend to glaze. And it won't fit in here even straight down. Uh, so I'm going to do this in two sections. Well, I might have to do the whole thing never know what you're going to do when you start off. We'll try dipping it in like that. It's still not going to fit. We're going to have to turn it over see if we can get it all that way. Okay, now you may have to hold it until it gets dry enough. Uh, find a place to set it down. Yeah, it's on there. Yeah. Now you can see I didn't quite get it all. You can always dip it back in for some more unless the uh, glaze of, uh, shows every thickness to it. The black glaze tends to just show black. So as long as I'll use a little bit of, uh, on the edge to touch up because I get a drip at the end there. Now this one, chip and dip. It represents a special problem. If you just dip it in, you're not going to get the middle uh, bowl. And so I'll grab a, a, bowl, uh, a cup full to start in the middle here. Pour it in. Pour it around in there. Slosh it around. Pretty much get that middle part taken care of before dipping in the whole thing. Slosh it around the outside there, pull it straight up, let it drain, and there, that took care of one glaze for that. Smaller bowls, of course, aren't any particular problem. Just dip it in and slosh it around. Okay, that's it for glazing larger items until we switch to the other color for, uh, for that one bowl I was just demonstrating. Now here's the bowl. This part's all glazed with black. I've got a, a bowl of white glaze and where it overlaps it comes out blue because of the recipe. Uh, we're just going to dip about half of this again, rotating it again so that you don't just have a straight line across which can be a little boring. And you're going to get an interesting kind of peanut shaped overlap there. Then again to finish it off, uh, in a minute I'll, I'll put a little splash of color on one side there to give it my own personal finish. 
All right, well, I've got this pot, and it was dipped twice, and now the bottom needs to be cleaned off. I didn't put any wax on this, so I just have to rub pretty carefully with the sponge to get enough glaze off so it won't stick. And learning how much glaze to get off that way is certainly a matter of learning how your glazes work. I don't have to take very much off mine because I know they don't move very much, except for the crystalline glazes that I work with. So that's probably good enough. Now I'm going to add just a little line of color here on this side. Black on top of white. We've got white over black and now black over white. And just add a little splash like that to add a little extra interest to the piece. Thank you. 